Good morning. It's a blessing to see you all here, and we rejoice in this opportunity to be together. And I can take it off while I'm preaching. <laughs> Do have a few announcements, uh, one of which is that, uh, as some of you may be already aware and some may not, the mystery dinner theater event for which had been scheduled for November is not going to be occurring uh, due to the increase in COVID. We received a uh, uh, note from the DS, uh, which really went out to all churches, saying that sit-down meals would no longer be uh, acceptable. So we are not going to be doing that. Maybe we can get back and finish off what we started. Uh, those who uh, are in the play or have been in the play, uh, maybe we can finish it off next spring. We'll certainly hope so. Uh, but at any rate, that's the situation at the moment. Uh, <coughs> oh, and also, yeah, the ham dinner, which had been scheduled for today, will not be occurring uh, for that same reason. Jeff? Yeah, the breakfast, which was scheduled for a couple weeks out from now, uh, will not be occurring either. So um, that's uh, where we're at on those things. Uh, Tuesday night, we do have a Staff Parish Relations Committee meeting. That will be a Zoom meeting and not uh, in person for those who are part of the SPR. Uh, have some concerns, some uh, prayer requests, and uh, so I'd like to lift them up. Um, Jeremy Corcoran uh, had a car accident this week and had a rather major concussion, I guess, and so would ask you to keep him in your prayers for healing. Uh, Jeff's brother-in-law, Kermit, uh, is suffering from cancer and uh, would appreciate very much your prayers. My sister, Robbie, uh, has a pair of neighbors. They've been really gracious and wonderful to her, have... Uh, brought soup over to her and all kinds of things in, in and through this time. And uh, Sarah, it was just discovered, has liver cancer. So uh, would ask for prayers for Sarah. Uh, the nine-year-old girl that was mentioned last week, Sadie, who is going through massive issues over a, and a COVID infection, would invite you to keep her in your prayers as well. Continue to lift up the family of Jonathan Milligan of uh, Marcia Johnson's son, Kevin. Uh, keep him in your prayers as he continues. Any, any new updates? Nope, just still, still fighting. Yep. I'm sorry, what was that? Yeah, and, and they, uh, <coughs> they do linger quite, uh, quite extensively. So uh, let's uh, keep, and I'm sure all of you know someone who has gone through that as well. Uh, keep those folks in your prayers. My sister, Robbie, uh, we believe that has kind of turned a corner this week, and we're really excited about that. So uh, ask you to keep her in your prayers. Uh, Linda is home now, and uh, ask you to keep Linda and Ed Vandemark in your prayers. She is in hospice care. I'm sure any notes that you would like to send would be gratefully received. I think visits uh, are probably more than she really is up for at this point. If that changes, I will let you know. Eleanor Irway's son, Philip. Do we have any updates on Philip, Eleanor? No? Okay, just continue to lift up his eye situation. Uh, Brenda Yar, uh, her husband did die, and uh, there were visiting hours yes, or, uh, Friday. Uh, we did get up to see her, and... Um, she is doing well, but we would ask you to keep her in prayer. Did see a lot of names we knew on the visiting list. And so we thank you all for that. And, uh, and I know she has felt very loved. And hopefully at some point we'll see her back at the piano a time or two. So we look forward to that possibility. Um, ask you to keep Joan and Bob Fisher in your prayers as they are headed down to the Carolinas, uh, moving into closer proximity with their son. So uh, uh, Joan has so long served this church in so many different ways, and uh, we have appreciated greatly her ministry 
And so we invite you to keep her and Bob in your thoughts and prayers. Are there others that you'd like to lift up or any announcements that you need to have made? Yes. Would you like to share the article? Oh, yes. Yes. I'm... How many of you found one of these in your mailbox as a complimentary copy recently? It's, I, yeah, you probably can't see it from there. Uh, how, if you're a hunter, you already, even, even from this distance, you know this is a picture of a really nice buck. But at any rate, it's Life in the Finger Lakes. It, it's a, uh, a magazine that's been around for quite some time. I have a friend who was instrumental in getting this started. He is no longer with us, but he was a phenomenal photographer. At any rate, if you get one of these, or it might even be worth just going out and buying one, uh, on page 32... There is a full centerfold spread, Carol's Art Bar. And, uh, and so then there is some more uh, stuff on it. It goes, uh, well, let's see, one, two, three, four, uh, five, actually six pages of, of between print and pictures in this magazine on Carol's coffee and art bar. So uh, it, it's, uh, it's, it's well warranted and uh, we're so excited for the two of them and uh, we just really are uh, celebrate. Uh, it's a great place. If you haven't ever gone, you really need to go. And um, I personally suggest the chai uh, is really good. The peanut butter cookies are phenomenal. And as I have said before, the peanut butter milkshakes will be as close as to heaven as you get in this life. Uh, just, you know, up front. All right, anything else? I believe Dave has something. Yeah, uh, talking from the back here. Um, just uh, something to put in the back of your mind because it's coming up in about six weeks. We'll be selling Christmas trees again. So that being an outdoor activity, we can do that. Um, so we will get the sign-up sheet going around again and online and Hope that uh, you'll be able to participate as you're able and invite others in that as they're able. Uh, you don't have to do it alone, but uh, do it with somebody that you're comfortable being around. And we appreciate all the help that we've had over the years. All right. So if you've been pining for Christmas for a long time, and, yeah, and, and then let me needle you. Uh, it just spruce up your warm clothes. Yeah, okay, well, we'll quit there then. <laughs> yeah. All right, so we're closing in on that time frame, and uh, what a joyful uh, time it is indeed. So if, you, uh, if you're ready to sign up today, I suspect Dave will take your name and write it down. Yeah, anything else? All right, seeing nothing, then I would invite you to, uh, to stand and as we are led into an invitation to the Holy Spirit. Let us pray together. O oh God, the Holy Spirit, come to us and among us. Come as the wind and cleanse us. Come as the fire and burn. Come as the dew and refresh, convict, convert, and consecrate many hearts and lives to our great good and to thy greater glory. And this we ask for Jesus Christ's sake. Amen. Our first hymn is number 140, Great is Thy Faithfulness.
You may be seated. Let us be in an attitude of prayer. Good morning, God. Here we are gathered together in your sanctuary or in our homes, bowing our heads to show honor to you and to come to you in prayer. Holy Spirit, I invite you now to come into our hearts and minds and bodies and bring us into stillness as we come before God's throne of grace. Abba, as your children, we acknowledge our complete need for you, and it is our desire to deepen our relationship with you more and more each day. You are so kind to us. You are so patient with us. You are so longing for each of your children to come into the fullness that you have planned. Lord, there are many things that we allow to get in the way of your perfect plan and precious connection that you so greatly desire to have with us. Lord, please forgive us. We let the worries of this world consume so much of our thoughts and energy. So in the midst of our challenges, we praise you. We praise you for the miracle bodies that you have given us, as broken as they are at times. We praise you for the families we were born into and the many people that you put in our paths to help us grow. We praise you for providing food and shelter. We praise you for the, that we have safe places to sleep. We praise you for our families and friends. We praise you for gifting each one of us with talents and callings. And we praise you for the gift of your son, Jesus Christ. We praise you for your perfect plan for our salvation and for sending your one and only son to teach us your ways. We praise you for his sacrifice and his resurrection. And we praise you for the gift of eternal life through your son, Jesus. We praise you for your word and your spirit, for who you are and who you are in us. We praise you for each and every blessing in our lives. We are here to give you glory, and we are here to be your hands and feet we are here to be the face of Christ in this broken world. And you don't leave us to our own devices as we try to live out this awesome responsibility. You equip us with everything we will need. If, and here's where we often stumble, we would only surrender everything to you. Yield ourselves to you. Call upon you for everything. Lord, anoint us with your gifts of grace and humility. Help us to take every thought captive. We want to hear your voice. Help us to be still enough to listen. Do whatever you need to do to remove the stumbling blocks to a greater oneness with you. Soften our hearts, Lord, and help us to remember that everything matters to you. And Lord, help us to be a blessing to others. Help us to feel that nudge of the Holy Spirit to make that phone call write that letter, strike up that conversation, drop off those cookies, send that card, and send up that prayer again and again and again. Volunteer for something, write that check or say that kind word, and use the gifts that you've given us, big and small, to make a difference in the lives of others. We ask all this in the mighty name of Jesus, your son. And lastly, we honor you with the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
For the children's message, uh, the title is Blessed to be a Blessing. And so uh, for the boys and girls who are perhaps watching at home, I certainly hope, um, one of the things that we know as Christians is that God has blessed us. We know about Jesus and we know about God's love for us and that is a really good thing. And when God does something really good for us, we call it a blessing. And God said, I am going to bless you so that you can be a blessing. And so one of the responsibilities that we have as Christian men and women and boys and girls is to be a blessing. Now, one place that we do that is very, very simple, and that's the one I'm going to talk about with you guys today, and that is the blessing. How many people uh, say a blessing or a prayer before they eat? Anybody out there? Yeah. And we call it a blessing because of two things. Number one, we say thank you to God for providing the food, and uh, we also th say thank you to God for the people who took part in raising the food, like the farmers and the places that we got the food from, the, oftentimes the grocery store, and uh, we are thankful for the person who cooked the food, even when it's something that we don't like. I, I'm sure that none of you have moms and dads who cook things that you don't like, but sometimes that does happen, so just be prepared, okay? Well, the second part, so the first part is giving thanks. We say thank you to God. We say thank you, God, for these other people. And, uh, <coughs> and then we, uh, we <laughs> not quite sure what that was, but we'll... Uh, uh, it's okay. Okay, no, no. It just it, it it was like sometimes stuff catches you, and you're going, wait, what? You know. And I thought maybe somebody's getting pulled over right out front here, and I thought maybe we could pray for them, but I guess not. All right. So, there was a, a noise, boys and girls, and uh, and it just it caught uh, uh, Reverend Stevens by surprise, <laughs> which is a good thing. That's a good thing to happen once in a while. Anyway. The other part of the blessing is we ask God to bless the food. And why do we do that? Because, not because we uh, think that the food is not going to be good for us, but we ask God to bless it so that we can be strengthened to do the things that God calls us to do. So we say, Lord, bless this food so that I will be strong to do the things you call me to do. And that's an important part of the blessing. So when we say a blessing before we eat, those are two parts of that. And we may go into some other parts too, but those are two important parts. Always, boys and girls, remember that. When you're praying before you eat, and you know what? You can do this anytime, anywhere, at a restaurant, in school. You can just stop and say, thank you, Lord, for this food, and bless it so that I will be strong to do your work. That's as simple a blessing as you can have, and it works. And, uh, and God rejoices in, in that. So let's be, uh, let's be real thoughtful about doing that, shall we? All right, let's pray together. Father, we thank you, Father, we thank you. For, food, for food, for people who grow it, for people who, grow it, for people who, sell, it, for people who sell it, and for people who prepare it. For people who prepare it. Lord, when we eat, Remind us, to be thankful Remind us to be thankful and ask for your blessing, and ask for your blessing. So, that we can be strong so we can be strong to do what you call us to do. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, uh, again, we will not be taking up an offering with a social distancing and all those kind of things. The offering plates are in the back and... and uh, we hope that you will uh, find them easily and be able to leave your tithes, your gifts, and your offerings. Give them as you are leaving. But there is so much more than finances when we talk about uh, our offerings before the Lord. And, uh, and we are the offering that God ultimately wants more than any other. So consider that, if you would, as we are led into a prayer of dedication, it, that it would not simply be a dedication of our finances, but of our souls. 
Let us be in an attitude of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we dedicate our offerings to you, to the plan you have for this church, this community, this world. We want to use the blessings that you have given us to be a blessing for others. May it be so, in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> Today's scriptures are a variety of passages that I will be reading for you. <clears throat> We're going to begin with Genesis 1, 27 through 28a. So God created humankind in his image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them and said, be fruitful and multiply. Genesis 2, 2 and 3. And on the seventh day, God finished the work that he had done, and he rested on the seventh day from all the work that he had done. So God blessed the seventh day and hallowed it, because on it God rested from all the work that he had done in creation. Genesis 48, 15 through 20. He blessed Joseph and said, The God before whom my ancestors Abraham and Isaac walked, the God who has been my shepherd all my life to this day, the angel who has redeemed me from all harm, bless the boys, and in them let my name be perpetuated in the name of my ancestors Abraham and Isaac, and let them grow into a multitude on the earth. When Joseph saw that his father laid his right hand on the head of Ephraim, it displeased him, so he took his father's hand he re to remove it from Ephraim's head to Manasseh's head. Joseph said to his father, Not so, my father, since this, is, this one is the firstborn. Put your right hand on his head. But his father refused and said, I know, my son, I know. He also shall become a people, and he also shall be great. Nevertheless, his younger brother shall be greater than he, and his offspring shall become a multitude of nations. So he blessed them that day, saying, by you, Israel, will invoke blessings, saying, God made you like Ephraim and like Manasseh. Portions from Matthew 5, 3 through 11. Blessed are the poor in spirit. Blessed are those who mourn. Blessed are the meek. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. Blessed are the merciful. Blessed are the pure in heart. Blessed are the peacemakers. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Mark 10:16. And he, Jesus, took them, the children, up in his arms, laid his hands on them, and blessed them. And lastly, James 1:12. Blessed is anyone who endures temptation, such a one that stood the test and will receive the crown of life that the Lord has promised to those who love him. The word of God for the people of God. Guess what the subject matter for the sermon is today? <laughs> Blessing. And the theme that I, I really want to stress, and this is going to extend for a couple, three weeks, is the responsibility that we have in Christ for passing the blessing. Ultimate, ultimately, the, the blessing that is first and foremost in the life of every Christian is the blessing of a relationship with God through Jesus Christ. That, that intimate relationship that begins with an acceptance of the Lordship of Christ is indeed our greatest blessing and our greatest responsibility to pass on. Hence the assignment and really the, the singular assignment of all Christians, which is go into all the world and make disciples of every nation. That's what Jesus told the disciples. That's what he's telling us. And so that is a passing of the blessing when we share the message of Jesus Christ with others. And, uh, but it goes, it goes beyond that, and there are ways that we can live that make that passing of the blessing 
much easier and our blessings in and of themselves that we pass on. The concept of God actively providing blessings is a theme that God demonstrates right at the very beginning of the biblical history and continues throughout the Bible story. The concept is at the heart of Jesus' most famous sermon, the Sermon on the Mount, isn't it? We uh, prefer to think of blessings as purely good things, wonderful things, positive things, things that make us happy, start to finish. But in the biblical story, they don't always come out exactly that way, do they? If you look at the uh, Sermon on the Mount, it's a whole series of things that don't seem like they'd be terribly blessed. And yet, Jesus accompanies them with words of encouragement and, uh, and he substantiates the blessing in his own life into the lives of those around him. And that would be us as well. However, whatever they come out as, the blessings of God are always purposeful. They always represent God's presence and plan even when they are spoken by someone who is not God directly, but represents God. And that would be, again, you and I. Technically, you and me, for those of you who are English teachers. Yes. Anyway, so uh, a couple weeks ago, I mentioned uh, in the sermon about Jesus blessing the children, taking them into his lap and, and blessing them. And my encouragement to really think on that and as Christians to reach out with bless blessings as we are empowered and encouraged by God to do so through the Holy Spirit caused the men's group to, uh, the following Wednesday, ask me some questions about that very thing. Well, what exactly are blessings? How do we, how do we bless others? How, how do we... Uh, and we really got into a rather uh, detailed discussion, and it really was pretty fascinating. And uh, like many assumptions that flow easily from the pulpit, I had to really think about it for a minute, or a couple of weeks or so. And after a lot of discussion with the men that day, I was encouraged to talk about that very subject of blessing others in a future sermon. Well. The future has arrived. Sadly, there are no flying cars, as we were promised in the 50s, but off we go anyway into another future. Biblically, there are a number of different types of blessings that are given, but most of the time they only show up as, and he blessed them. And so we don't really always have a detail in terms of what the blessing constituted, Although in some cases, as we read today, uh, there are some that are very clearly defined. That would be one type of blessing which shows up. And that is when a father was approaching the end of life in the Old Testament and prophetic words are spoken over their son or their grandsons. That's one form of biblical blessing. We see that in the blessing of Joseph uh, or the blessing of Joseph's two sons, Ephraim and Manasseh, by their grandfather. These blessings sometimes come out a bit sideways in human terms, as we see in that, because typically the best blessing was reserved for the eldest. Do you remember the story of Esau and Jacob? And, uh, and Jacob sneaks in, and his father is blind, and he steals the best blessing. And so when Esau gets there for his blessing, it's too late, and his father can only give him the second blessing, which isn't as good as the first. Well, in this case, the eldest son, and, and there was very specific technical details there, that you would put your right hand on the eldest son, and he would get the best blessing, and then your left hand on the next youngest, and, or the next oldest, and, and that would continue down the line. So the eldest got the best blessing, 
youngest and any others got a secondary blessing which wasn't quite as good and here we see Jacob doing the opposite swapping hands Joseph says no 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 you don't understand this is the oldest one and uh, and Jacob says and and here's where we get a clue he says I know that this is the one who gets this blessing and this is the one who gets this blessing and uh, and so we begin to see a little hint of what blessing consists of in terms of the importance of the Holy Spirit the movement of the Holy Spirit in that process Jacob knew something that Joseph did not know and he spoke the blessing according to what God was telling him and his prophetic utterance indeed came true so again sometimes blessings can be prophetic another form of blessing 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 is simply a thanksgiving to the Lord for something that was done that has benefited us greatly or even maybe just a little bit for example an oft quoted bit of scripture from Mary upon hearing the news that she would bear the Messiah her response is a prayer of thanksgiving that we know as the Magnificat my soul magnifies or blesses the Lord in times like that blessing God or praising God and we certainly have reason to do that and hopefully every sermon that you ever hear will reflect that Thanksgiving to some degree and uh, and so we we bless God with our praise do you bless God regularly in your life another blessing is a derivative of that of Thanksgiving so as I said in the children's message we say the blessing before we eat we directly thank God and ask that he in turn bless the food depending on the skill of the cook that might have deeper meaning for some than for others but do you say a blessing at mealtime blessings are good things right they could be words of encouragement to someone with whom we are great friends or perhaps someone who is a complete stranger how many of you remember the old cartoon underdog okay are you ready to sing speed of lightning roar of thunder fighting all who rob or plunder underdog ooh, underdog underdog okay thank you I didn't, and I didn't just sing that because I, I like that song underdog is exactly that he is the underdog he is a mild-mannered shoeshine boy slash dog who is in his normal life ekes out a living by polishing the shoes of his clear superiors and after biting the coin given in order to test its authenticity and receiving their thanks thank you shoeshine boy you're humble and lovable responds bless you sir in a voice that only Wally Cox can truly muster up do you ever offer words of blessing to strangers I mean do you ever even just say bless you or God bless you you know yes when someone sneezes but I think somewhere in there that we've lost the real impact of a blessing and it's just a response do you offer out words of blessing have you ever said may God bless you to someone who has helped you done you a good turn or perhaps just uh, just because you felt moved to do so Jesus's example of blessing the children um, strikes me as something that is much more substantial than simply you know saying oh bless you kid you know you're a nice kid so what do you want for Christmas you know, kind of thing Jesus blessing was much more than that I believe the implied reality of all blessings in the biblical text is far greater than a simple thank you although that often is a good place for us to start blessing others one of the places that uh, a couple of examples that come out of my own life and you may have some very similar ones um, Friday night we had gone up to uh, the funeral home to stop in and see Brenda 
And on the way back, we stopped at Metro's uh, for supper. And so we went in, and uh, we sat down at the table, and it began to fill up very quickly. We had a great pizza, by the way. Really, really good. And uh, <coughs> so there were two people, two waitresses working. And I mean, they were scrambling. Have, you, have any of you been out to eat recently? Have any of you, yes, I know some people have because we sat right beside them. <laughs> have any of you noticed how hardworking the staff who is there is? Uh, it is absolutely remarkable. There were two people waiting all those tables and they were scrambling and they were doing a great job. They were caring for every need. Stopped at least three times during the meal to make sure everything was still good or did we need anything. How they found time to do that, I do not know. But at, uh, as we were finishing up uh, and our waitress came back through and the other waitress had stopped to help us out as well. And, uh, and I said, you know, you guys are really scrambling tonight and I want you to know that we appreciate it. Uh, we appreciate what you're doing. We appreciate you being here. And uh, I just wanted to say thank you. And you, you would have thought I gave her a million dollars, which I did not, but uh, I did give her a good tip. And that was another way of blessing and saying thank you. You know, do you think of that when that happens in your life, are you quick to, uh, to let that person know how much you appreciate what they've done for them? Do you do that? And if you do, do you see it as offering a blessing? Do you do it in Christ? Because if you just do it and you're not thinking about it from any other perspective, that's great. But if you do it in Christ, that's greater. It really does make a difference. And uh, again, the Holy Spirit enters into that because if they're scrambling, why would I want to waste their time telling them how good they are? You know? And, and it just really got impressed on me that that was something I should do. Do you do that? Do you say thank you? And do you offer a word or some symbol of blessing? Because that's one of the things we're talking about. We are blessed to be a blessing in every area of our lives. The uh, promise that we have been blessed in order to be a blessing should fill us with a sense of purpose and empowerment. Okay, Purpose, this is something we should do. Empowerment, this is something I can do. Do you see how those two work? Two very important things. It should fill us with purpose and empowerment that really we probably very rarely engage. Just as God's word spoken into the void of an uncreated space had such power and purpose that all that is came from nothing at all except that creative word. Doesn't that suggest something critical? about the creative power that God has instilled in your life through your relationship with him? If so, what more is there to consider? It seems to me that the final element to include before we go into a description and a demonstration of the what, when, why, where, how is the Holy Spirit. Again, to stress that to you. We claim that we believe that the Holy Spirit is, and I quote, God present with us for guidance, for comfort, and for strength. God is with us to provide guidance, to provide comfort, and to provide the strength to do what we are guided to do. You know, uh, it, it really is a huge thing. This is a statement of faith included in the Korean Methodist affirmation found on page 884 of your United Methodist Hymnal. Jesus promised the coming of the Holy Spirit before he ascended into heaven. He promised that the Holy Spirit was coming. We celebrate that coming of the Holy Spirit in Pentecost. And so if God is with you constantly, if God is a God of blessing, if you are blessed to be a blessing, and if you believe that, 
And all but the very last if is a given in the life of a Christian, by the way. It's not really an if. The only if is if you believe that. Then it really doesn't make sense that the Holy Spirit would not only be, then doesn't it make sense that not only would the Holy Spirit be able and willing, but actively acting out in inspiring our hearts toward speaking blessings into the lives of those around us. Doesn't that just make sense? Do you begin to see the possibility of blessing others and being blessed yourself? Do you begin to have a desire to do something godly in the world around you? This is a godly act, offering blessings on behalf of God under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit to encourage, to build up, to build up the kingdom, to build up the church. You can speak that blessing into reality in the world around you. Now, let me say very clearly, this is not a name it, claim it sort of thing. That's, by the way, the word for that, the technical term is magic. Okay? We don't do magic in Christianity. That is bogus. This is instead a total dependence on the Holy Spirit instead of self. If I name what I want, I get it. That's the, you know, that, and that's crazy. That's not, that's not a blessing, okay? Not a blessing in Christ, for sure. We are dependent on the Holy Spirit for the inspiration and for the words, oft times, and then God is responsible for the results. This isn't a wealth in the ways of the world plan at all. This is a spiritually oriented reality that I believe that God wants to enact in the life and the work and the possibilities of every Christian that exists. It isn't magic. There are no magic words. It isn't gained by knowledge or experience so much as, again, a pure dependence on and attention to the Holy Spirit in our lives. And from our perspective, a willingness to be obedient to that part of God that indwells us, the Holy Spirit. Now, I'm going to kind of end in, in this uh, area today. And next week we will have a not ready for the 1030 service players uh, at some level, and we're going to demonstrate some stuff for you. And we will be uh, doing some, uh, some blessings. And I would uh, certainly say that I would expect afterwards uh, anybody who would like to receive a blessing, um, you are welcome to stay, and we will indeed do that with you. But uh, in addition, I would encourage you to invite a friend to church next Sunday. Because what we're talking about here really is turning the Holy Spirit loose in our lives and being a blessing in this world. How often are you encountering blessings right now in the world in which you live? There's another cartoon that was famous. Song of the South, do you remember that, a Disney one? Remember this, one of the songs? Pretty much zippity doo da. There's not a lot of blessing going on in this world, and I'm going to tell you what, you are responsible to change that in your world. You ever think about getting up and blessing your spouse in the morning? If you have a spouse, you're blessed with that. Have you ever gotten up and blessed your children? Have you ever blessed your children before they went to bed? Oh, we're going to cover a bunch of stuff. I think it's going to be exciting. I think some big things are going to happen. I really do. I encourage you to bring somebody with you next week with all my heart. But come prepared because you are also going to get assignments. 
And, uh, and not, not so much that it's going to be homework that I am going to check up on afterwards or anything like that. I promise I won't do that. But I'm hoping that you'll want to come in and turn in your homework. Share some of the places where God has spoken to you and encouraged you to be an encouragement, blessed you to be a blessing, given you words of faith to build faith in someone else. This, this, folks, is what we're supposed to be doing. And, uh, you know, this is something I should have addressed a long time ago, probably. And I'm sorry that I have not. But we're going to get on it. And uh, I think we've got a great Sunday in store for us next week. In the meantime, I would like you to look for opportunities to be a blessing in the simplest form. I would invite you to look for opportunities to thank people around you from the simplest things they do to the most complex. If you go out to dinner, even if the waiter or waitress is not that great, thank them for being there and caring for you. And put it in those terms. Elevate their job to what it really is, a job of servanthood, and that's what we're called to. Um, Be grateful when you check out at the supermarket. Let them know. Say thank you for being here. And uh, look for the simplest opportunities. And once we begin to see those, God will open up our hearts and minds to other things as well that may have deep and wonderful significance. Well, one of the great blessings that we have is, of course, the sacraments. Today we will be sharing the sacrament of communion And that is indeed God's blessing. How many of you take a brain supplement? Okay. And and what is its purpose? Anybody want to tell me what the purpose of a brain supplement is? Improve your memory. Ding, 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 ding. We have a winner. Yes. You know, this is a spiritual supplement which brings to our memory the great good news of a God who loves us so much that he went to the cross for us. Who loves us so much that he blesses us consistently and loves us so much that he wants us to share in the joy of those blessings. And so I say with confidence, the Lord be with you. you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It It is right. It is a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, to bless you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. So with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and he said, Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup. He gave thanks to you. He took the cup, gave thanks, and then gave it to his disciples. By the way, that's you and me. He gave thanks. He took the cup and he gave it to us. And he said, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. So in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice 
in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and the blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world till Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. The body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. Take now and receive the elements of communion, giving thanks, blessing God in your hearts for his blessing toward you. Let's continue in an attitude of prayer. God, you have blessed us in this meal. Now make us to be a blessing. In Jesus' name, amen. We invite you to stand, and you can turn in your hymnals, or you can look up on the screen, and we will be singing our last hymn.
Um, for those of you at home and didn't see that, <coughs> there was a little bit of trouble getting into the, uh, the display of the words of the hymn uh, on the screen. And I know that song well enough, the first verse, that I could sing it without any trouble till I suddenly realized that I kept looking up to see if it was up there yet, and, and I doubted that I could do it. And I fumbled and I stumbled my way through the beginning of it. That was God, by the way. That was not David, uh, I'm sure. Folks, when we go out <coughs> into the world, don't worry about fumbling and stumbling. You know? You, you don't even have to know the words. The Holy Spirit is at work in us for guidance, giving us the words, comfort, encouraging us when we give the words, and strength, endurance, to pursue it to the end. And uh, what, a, what a perfect example, you know. Don't look to yourself. Look to the things of God. Go out there because you have been blessed. Now go and be a blessing. Amen. Hey, Sandy, how are you? 